World War II took its toll, as all war does, but the expansion that followed was arguably unprecedented. The baby boomers came with both economic and geographic growth. New growing families needed houses to live in, and that meant building materials. The Second World War required munitions, supplies, and men, but all of these required money. As Sue Mills Fremlin E. Hollingsworth once put it, Ottawa, in their efforts to raise money for the war, learned that money did not grow on trees. One of the largest sources of funding was victory bonds. The Algoma campaign was led by John A. McPhail, who appointed Fremlin as chairman for Sault Ste. Marie for the first three campaigns. At the time, the government offered no interest on savings accounts, but promised 3% on victory bonds. With supply lines diverted to the war and inventory hard to replace, Fremlin's solution for Sioux Mill was to put all profit into victory bonds. Using this model as a sales pitch to other business owners in the area, Algoma surpassed its quota in all nine campaigns, raising over $7.5 million in the last two campaigns of 1945 alone. In 1946, Fremlin's eldest son, Simpson, having completed his service in the RCAF, joined the company. Three years later, his next son, Lynn, having completed his engineering degree, began working in the bookkeeping department. Four years after that, Ian, the youngest son, had obtained a degree in civil engineering and also joined the company. 1952 was a pivotal year for Sioux Mill. It marked both the opening of their new retail space and the retirement of Fremlin Hollingsworth. The new storefront was situated across the ACR line on the corner of North Street and Railroad Avenue and boasted 24,000 square feet of sales floor and ample parking, as well as the addition of hardware, paints and varnishes, and flooring. A six-page insert in the Sioux Star also showed the continued success of the adjacent Michigan Maple Block Company. As for Fremlin's retirement, it proved to only be a change of scenery as he moved from Sioux Mill to Great Lakes Power, where he took over from McPhail as president for the next 19 years. He also used his retirement to continue his community work. In 1952, Sir James Dunn's attempt to raise money for the General Hospital came up $37,000 short of his goal. Fremlin was asked to run a one-man campaign to make up the difference. He raised $130,000 as well as extra funds for the Plummer Hospital. Five years later, he was also the first president of the United Appeal Campaign, an attempt to consolidate fundraising in Sault Ste. Marie to one campaign that would then be divided among the causes. This first movement joined the National United Way organization in 1973. These years of Sioux Mills history are also the backdrop to many stories of those who were helped by Fremlin and the employees of Sioux Mill. The immigrant family trying to build their home a few boards at a time, who were given a delivery truck full of supplies and told to pay when they could. Or the child left with their father's debts, who was able to pay them off over time and own their home outright. Even those who just needed advice. The stories are numerous and vast. The late 50s and early 60s saw further remodeling of the new store, which now included plumbing, electrical, heating, and drapery departments. These small local expansions were a glimpse of what was to come. 